What is history? First, let's start with store. Okay, take a look at to store something. That which is a household camp, stored food, clothing, other necessities collected. These are the words that are going, we need to focus on. We discuss history. These are the words we need to focus on. Okay? Story. I'm just blowing it up. Story. And I want you to see this real quick. This right here. Story. A narrative. True or presumed to be true? <laughs> Related celebrity persons or of a more or less important remote past, a historical relation and an, an anecdote is the name. Uh, it don't have to be true, y'all. It's a story. Okay. Take a look. This is another part. A recital of events that have or alleged to have happened. Alleged to have happened. A are or might be narrated. That's all a story is. There's no truth in a story. Well, the reason you listen to a story is because you want the meaning of the story. The way ancient Africans used to teach is we used to give stories, and everybody knew the story wasn't true, but what you got out of the story was. Storyteller. One who is accustomed to tell stories or anecdotes in conversation. Tell stories. Oh, that's what the news is. That's why I bring it up. The, the news don't say they're telling news anymore. They say we're telling stories. <laughs> uh, so a conversation, uh, euphemistically, a liar. Come on, y'all. This is, this is the knowledge. This is it. This is the center, the foundations of English knowing. Take a look. One whose business it is to recite legendary or romantic stories. A writer of stories, okay? Hist. Here's the first part of the word history. Hist, okay? A natural exclamation, more uh, uh, enjoining silence which seems to be suggested by the uh, uh, abrupt stoppage of the syllabant by the mute. Re really, it, see here, it's, the, it's like this. A hist is a silent calling. It's like, pss, pss, pss. That's what a hist is. Look at this. A similar sound made to urge a, or a dog or other animal. A similar sound made like, pss, look at this. Hist the boy, hist the boy. An exclamation used to incite or urge on. Hist is hist, okay, to summon with the exclamation hist, to summon in silence or without noise. Hist, hist, hist. Here's history. I, this was his. I don't have to get into this. I just put it here because when we get into the classroom, we'll talk about like you, it, our, our youth are seniors. That when, when when they the minute we got history, most of us usually would say that we look at the word when we were young and we say that's his story. <laughs> your intelligence, fast it is, but I'm backing your intelligence up with real knowledge. You were right. The actual etymology of the story is his story. This is his, 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 his. Okay, and then I go all the way down. We're we going to read through all of this. His, his, obsolete, of B. Okay, his. This is all the other, his, high. Okay, plural, okay. Them, it really, them. Okay, now, come over here. History, okay. Now, I stop here because this is what is in, 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 in the book. A narrative. Story. Of past events, tale, story, a learning, learning inquiry, an account of one's inquiries, nav narrative, history from the Greek, knowing, learned, wise man, judge, to know, history, to know. Now, the reason I point that out is because the etymology of the word history has nothing to do with the recording of the past. You see, they jump. This word history, okay, they're just making it a relation of incidents, true or imaginary. Look at that. A relation of it. This is what history actually is. 
a relation of incidents, either true or imaginary. Later, later on, only of those professedly true, a narrative tale, a tale or story, okay? Nothing in history is true. When you look at the word history, what you're looking at is hist and ori. Hist, we just saw, is only a calling. Hist, hist the boy, and it's what you give to dogs. Come here. The ori, the ori is a suffix that applies to this. The ori, or the environment of, or um, the, uh, the action of. That's what ori is, it's a suffix. The action, uh, so you have laboratory, ori. Ori is speaking to the labra. Crematory, the ori is speaking to the cremation. So this suffix ori is hist. So a hist ori is really only the environment or the representation of somebody calling you. Like, <laughs> that's what history is. Now, go even deeper, and, 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 it's, and, it, and I'm paraphrasing because when we get in the classroom, I'm gonna break this even further in philosophy yet. This is just etymology, so that your mind can get prepared for what we are gonna get into. This, is, this, is, this will shock a few people uh, as we go down the line here. What history is, it's a silent calling. So you have to ask yourself, what are we being called to? When someone says, this is your history, the first thing you should you me, what are you calling me to? The history of African Americans begin with slavery. So African American history, then they start teaching, came here 1619, Jamestown, Virginia, on a slave ship. That's history. That ain't true. They just calling you back to slavery. Come on back. Come on. The word history has nothing to do with the recording of the past. Remember that. Let's go on. Historical, historian, historian, a writer or author of history. Stop. Author of history? Uh -huh. A writer or author of history. One who produces a work of history in the higher sense. Meaning, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Historian got to tell the truth. Okay. Now, and look at here. I want you to see this too. French historian. Old French, okay, from London, and we're going to look at that too, okay? Now, chronicle of events from, you know, okay, that's it. the so one who relates narratives, storyteller. What did they say a storyteller was? They said a storyteller is a liar. I just showed you the storyteller is a liar, okay? That's the second definition of a storyteller. They say who relates a narrative or a tale? A storyteller. Okay? They're telling you right up, in, right up. if you really want to get to the scholarship, we lying. <laughs> Back to the imaginary. Why? Because here, take a look at the word high. I just go over this. High means, hey, <laughs> greeting. So even if we go high store, it's a greeting to a lie. Here is histo. This is all the ways in which you can look at this word, okay? This is all the ways you can look at history. None of them apply to record. Histo. Hist. We just saw hist. Here is body tissue. Histogenis. Greek. Histo. Web. Okay? That's what histo is. A web. This is more medical terminology. They give you the chemistry, you know, this kind of stuff like that, right? Now, I want you to take a look here. This, this was the ori. Here, we just want to, of relating by, that's what Ori means, of, related to, characterized by, a place or thing used for or connection with, and then there's crematory, just Ori, Old French, okay, we just went over that, Ori, 
only means, it only relates to the other word. It's a characterized, it's related to, this kind of into this later on. This guy here, I'm not going to discuss him right now, but this is um, King Osceola. This portrait was made of his by he was captured at Fort, uh, Fort Moultrie uh, in Texas. He was captured, and, and when they show this picture, there's the black Indians. And in this book, Black Indians, uh, he talks about, and he says that when they painted this picture of Osceola, they should have painted the 55 African warriors that walked with him. They only show you this picture of a Native American like this. But what they never showed was he always walked with 50 big lip, dark skin, kinky head Africans. Him. They'll never show you that because those are the people he, they robbed. So you never, you only going to see him. Here's black Indians. Take a look. These are brothers too, by the way. They're brothers. Same mother. Look at him. Look at him. At one time, we were the same people. Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary. This is where we get into the word nigger. It's all good. You guys can see this, yeah? Yeah. 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 Peace and welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am Minister Sun One. Let us welcome the Queen Kandake, Minister G. Simone. To the Temple of Hip Hop, I am the acronologist G. Simone. The Temple of Hip Hop is an archive school and society that approaches hip hop as a divinely inspired global culture of peace and prosperity. Established in 1996 with the affirmation, I am hip hop. The Temple of Hip Hop then presented hip hop to the United Nations on May 16, 2001. As an international culture of peace and prosperity, it was recognized by UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, as such. It was at this momentous event with over 300 hip hop including non-governmental organizations, various spiritual institutions, and government officials that the hip-hop community presented and signed the Hip-Hop Declaration of Peace, which establishes 18 principles which guide the hip-hop community away from internal self-destruction and towards internal self-creation, leading to cultural self-governance and cultural self-reliance. Again, welcome to the Temple of Hip-Hop. Today, we are reading the Gospel of Hip Hop at track three, located on page 375. Here we'll learn, endarkenment is the ability to see and function in an intellectual darkness as spiritual light. Let me say that again. Here we will learn, endarkenment is the ability to see and function in intellectual darkness as spiritual light. At this level of spiritual awareness, you are not looking for the light, you are the light. Here is an acronym for light. Living in God's highest truth. In God's highest truth. You are the light in your world and others' worlds. You are a God force. Do you afraid of that? Embrace it. Before the teacher speaks, I would like to send love to everyone who is listening. As we approach February 14th, it's a celebration of love and how you celebrate. So I'd like to shout out Desire One, Mondo One, Minister Zen, Maggie Love, Minister Sun One, and of course, Lifted, Minister Lifted. Thank you for all your messages during the week and all your love and appreciation for the Temple of Hip Hop and the ministers and, and all the people that are listening today. And we're preserving you, you're preserving us. It's just a that we're giving each other this energy. So without further ado, welcome the teacher, our teacher, KRS-One. Yes, indeed, as I scoot over real quick. <clears throat> Thank you, Simone. Let us begin. Peace. So let us begin. <clears throat> what, where, why, or when? What a great intro. Uh, 
for that, Simone. Um, broke the temple down real quick, and this why this way I don't have to uh, go into that. I can get right into it. Um, shout out of Simone just mentioned as well, um, and and shout out to you for being with us today. Again, welcome to the temple of hip hop. So, um, <clears throat> again, like I said, <clears throat> or as I say often. Uh, this again is a short read. Um, let me look over here, really. Uh, this is a short read, um, uh, but a long lesson. I got some notes here that I'm going to read uh, uh, here, here as well. Uh, let's go over what we already have been discussing. Uh, first track. <clears throat> in the first track, what we're discussing is endarkenment. And today we're going to learn about that concept, what it actually means. Two other lessons, which we call tracks, that gets your mind prepared for that. And we're going to go over that right now. The first track, <clears throat> real world as electromagnetic light. Uh, uh, as electromagnetic light. And this light, this, this, the material world as light, energy, can be affected by your energy. Energy is one. One energy looks a certain way, another, another way, but it's all energy. We talked about slicing up the loaf of bread. We talked about the uh, idea of ice being, oh, sorry, water being ice, steam, or liquid, but it's all still water. Light is the same way. Electromagnetic energy is the same way with material, with, with all that you see that is matter. This is all light. All of this, everything, this book, everything, including my physical body, is all for you um, live within the harmony of that light and even manipulate that light uh, uh, in that sense. You do it through your intentions. You do it This was the first part. Um, uh, <clears throat> your, your intentions and expectations affect the physical reality around you. We talked about values plus focus equals expectancy. Again, principles plus values plus focus expectancy. And really, it's, it's not even so much about um, uh, principles plus values plus uh, uh, focus. It's all principles create values. And create and values create focus, and that principles creating values, values creating focus. That those three create your expectancy based on your principles, based on your values, based on what you focused on. This is what you expect. So we asked that at, at, at that first lesson, what do you respect? You expect, uh, you expect what you respect, <laughs> and you get what you respect. And what you accept. We call this knowledge of wholeness, the Greeks knowledge of wholeness or participation in causes. To be a participant in the circumstances and situations of your life, not just acting to you, but be a, being aware that you can manipulate and flow with and communicate with the circumstances of your life. Going from believing in God to perceiving through God, perceiving through your divine nature. Simone just pointed out, you are the light, living in God's higher truth, highest truth actually, is that you are the light in the darkness. Everyone else is trying to run from the darkness, not realizing that you are the light. If you're in darkness, you obviously are the light. Start shining. The second track we talked about, which has Talked about cravings, lusts, fears, greeds, jealousies, as spiritual predators sucking the life force out of one's soul. We talked about the character of the attuning, protecting, and strengthening <clears throat> the hip hopper, meaning the character, the principles of the attuned hip hopper, strengthening the hip hopper, even when that hip hopper is aware. Or we talked about the GPS, guidance, protection, and strength. So you get that GPS, that divine GPS, guidance, protection, strength, even when you don't even know it. Why? Because your principles have become habit. 
We, 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 we talked about the hygiene, little things like hygiene and eating habits unconsciously guide, protect, and strengthen the hip hopper without that hip hopper eating. You see what it is. Accidents are avoided, opportunities are found, right place, right time experiences are frequent. Let me say it again. Accidents are avoided, opportunities are found. Right place, time experiences are frequent. This is, this is the, um, th this is, this is the, the life that, uh, this is the hip hop spiritual life. This is what it is offering. These kinds of concepts. We're walking in in darkness. And, and, and you're going to learn what that means well, because a lot of us are so conditioned to the light being the end-all, be-all. And we talked about this last week as well, about light only being 5% of the universe. Dark matter and dark energy is the other 95%. And so what are we really seeing when we can only see through our five senses or that which is shining and moving? That's what we're seeing. That's what we're calling reality. But we know that there's another reality that's not shining. It may be moving. Who knows? It's not shining. And that's why scientists, physicists, people, they call it dark matter, dark energy. So, so that was the last two weeks. We're on the third track. And this week we're continuing with our talk about the actual condition of enlightenment. This, this week we're talking about the actual condition of enlightenment and the condition of endarkenment. Because most people, like I was just saying, most people get caught up in light and white being holy and dark and black being evil. That's stupid. And we're going to get rid of that concept right now. There's no black as straight up, straight up colonialism and imperialism seeping into religion and religious ideas and spiritual ideas. Keep in mind that, you know, some of us chakra charts, you know, the human, the chakra, seven chakras, crown chakra, third eye chakra, throat chakra, heart, and, 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 and most of the time when you see these chakras, they have colors. You know, red, purple, so on. None of the chakras are ever black because of the way the culture and darkness, which is which is a direct link where this comes from, is the colonial disdain people. This is where it comes from. The Greeks, the Romans, onward. This group of dark people who their culture has a problem with. In addition to that, not understanding astronomy in the earlier parts of their civilization, not understanding astronomy, how to move around at night, caused nightmares and fear and this and that of the nighttime. This is all European culture. Other cultures do very well at night. In fact, they invite the night. Because at that point, you can talk to the universe if you know how to speak. So we're in a society, a colonial-based society, English colonial-based society, where darkness is looked at as evil and lightness or whiteness is looked at as holy. You got to break your mind from that or you're not really studying spirituality. Now, what, you're really, what we really need to look at is if you want to know the ratio between evil and good or, you know, uh, uh, th these things. Um, what does constitute the color of evil? What does constitute the color of righteousness? Well, it's not a color. It would be an intensity of light. Anything that is dim and dull is losing its power, period. Anything bright and vibrant, colorful, bright, pungent, it got its power. So you could have a black that is a glossy 
vibrant, pitch black, like the universe. Vibrant black. Or you can have a dim, dingy, dirty black. Like like black ice in New York, snow that turns dark, you know, grayish. You have you have that. You can have white as a a, a pearl, you know, or even a a brilliant white, a, a jumpy white, vibrant white. Or you can have a dim, dingy, dirty white. And and so. The, these are the 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 things to look at when you're looking at spiritual intensity through color, and we talk about that in the gospel of hip hop in the graffiti section. We didn't get to that yet, but you got to know that to understand in darkenment right now and why we are discussing these concepts. Look at the very concept of spirituality in the Western world, enlightenment. So right away you're looking to be light looking to be lighter, looking for white, looking for the bright. When we could clearly see in reality that 95% of, of the known universe is dark. We can look up and see the universe is dark. When we close our eyes, we get a glimpse of the universe, darkness. It is in that darkness that you are supposed to be light. You actually are the light in that darkness. Whether you are aware of it or unaware of it, that's going to determine your character and your awareness in that darkness. So let's get that out of the way at the top of this study real quick. That the idea of white being holy and black being evil, nah. The idea of black being holy and white being evil, nah. We're not doing all that. That's beyond our comprehension. Here we're dealing with the facts, what is known. Now, I'll tell you this, what is known, what has happened in human history, that we do know that in ancient Africa, it's funny, looking at the Western civilization, meaning that, you know, you look at the Western, um, look at color, excuse me, and black is um, uh, evil, dusky, gloomy, all black is evil in Western society, in white Western society. And of course, uh, white is holy in white Western society. But in Africa, in black Eastern society, white was the color of death. And, and, and look at this in history, historian, who's in control determines who's gonna be, you know, what colors are going to mean. In Africa and in African art, to paint somebody white was the color of death. It was the color of the spirit, really. Not just death as in dying in a gloomy sense, but the color of the spirit was white. And they were trying, I guess, to um, uh, represent uh, clear or something that the eye cannot see. Invisibility was represented by white. And a lot of civilizations felt this way as well that white represented the spirit and by proxy death, the other side. And so you think about this and you look and you say, wow, in Africa, white is death and spirit. In, you know, Britain, Europe, in Europe and Britain and America, white is holy and has nothing really to do with the spirit or death. Yes, the depictions of the spirit are white, or the crown chakra could be white. But in reality, the idea of white being associated with death is out of the Western mind. You know, I was uh, uh, talking to a doctor one day about health, and it was funny. He, he's a white man, um, and he was, we were just talking about health. He was a doctor right there. And he said, you know, really, if you really want to stay healthy, and he said it was sarcasm. He said, if you really want to stay healthy, stay away from everything white. And I said, what the are you saying to me? Like, what are we talking about here? And he said, no, stay away from everything white. Rice, pasta, salt, sugar, cocaine, 
you know, all of this type of stuff. Stay away from everything white. And, and I came away from that, you know, milk. And I came away from that. I was like, wow, that's interesting. Stay away from everything white. You're healthy. Now, of course, you know how crazy that sounds on a, on a racial level uh, or a socio-political level. Uh, that, that could be offensive straight up and down. So please don't, don't take my words out of context. But what I am showing here is how color changes according to culture, according to what the culture perceives as valuable, what the culture perceives as itself even is what the colors are going to also represent in your consciousness, in your education, and so on. For some people, the color red is the color of war, blood. For others, the color red is the color of love. We're here and celebrating, uh, well, acknowledging uh, Valentine's Day. And you see red hearts everywhere. You see the color red everywhere. Other people, red is the color of revolution. Red. Who, who defines is the ultimate question here. And usually it's the one with the gun that defines. The, the one that's pushing and bullying people around is the one that's also going to tell you what colors mean and, how, and what they mean uh, in the order that this power is looking to set up. Remember that. Don't let it seep into your spirituality. Oh, black is evil and white is good. Or black is good and white is evil. Or yellow and gold is spiritual. None of these colors are spiritual. And none of them are evil. They're colors. They're actually frequencies for the eye. That's what they actually are. So according to how you interpret the frequency is what it's going to be for you. Turn your gospel now to page 371, track 3. Enlightenment is a revelation, an awakening, a new way to interpret your reality. It is figuratively called light because it assists your ability to understand or see. You understand that? Enlightenment, what's called enlightenment in the Western world, of course, is a revelation, an awakening, a new way to interpret your reality. I, I, I see now. It is figuratively, figuratively called light. It's a figure. Poetically, awareness is called light. Because it assists in your ability to understand or see. Enlightenment assists in your ability to understand or see. To be enlightened is to become aware. Period. You can become enlightened about anything. Enlightened is to be where enlightenment is a state of awareness. It is the awareness of leaving one's self-caused immaturities. Self-caused immaturities. However, for those hip hoppers who live in the physical world, there is no prolonged ment uh, uh, mentally sustained sensation of enlightenment. That's TV. You know, you see the yogi sitting in the Himalayas and he's been there for 10 years. Why is that enlightenment? Because somebody told you it was? You know, why, why is meditation, why is prayer or meditation, why are any of these concepts considered spiritual or a path toward enlightenment? And not that they're not, but why are they? However, for those hip hoppers who live in the physical world, which is all of us, there is no prolonged men mentally sustained sensation of enlightenment. For the most part, enlightenment comes and goes. Great ideas and revelations appear like flashes of light in the mind. The results of your, uh, the, the results of your new awareness or enlightenment can remain with you for a long while, even a lifetime and beyond. What you learn stays with you. But the actual moment of enlightenment is temporary. Like a flash, it exists for only a moment. What you are left with is the revelation achieved by such a flash of enlightenment. Once enlightened, you can never return to ignorance again. 
This is what gives the impression that the actual experience of enlightenment remains with you throughout your life. On the contrary, it is through the experiences, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. On the contrary, it is through the experience of being enlightened or becoming aware that one's attitude and outlook on life changes. And I stopped there, so I was supposed to stop there. I just wanted to meditate on that real quick. It is through the experience of being enlightened, which is a flash. Oh, I get it. Or becoming aware that one's attitude and outlook on life changes. Like most people want to change their life and change their attitude without no revelation. And to be honest with you, it is it is the is it is the revelation. Is that ah oh, word? Oh, I get it. That changes your attitude. That changes your behavior. Uh, this is what gives the impression that the actual experience of enlightenment remains with you throughout your life. Let me read this one more time. On the contrary, it is through the experience, I'm going to read it correctly now. It is through the experience of being enlightened or becoming aware that one's attitude and outlooks on life changes, giving the impression that one has remained in the actual moment of enlightenment. For the attuned hip hopper, and notice for the attuned hip hopper, enlightenment, enlightenment is not the final stage of spiritual development while in the world. Enlightenment happens throughout one's life. For the attuned hip hopper, enlightenment has to do with realizing one's true self as spirit detached from the senses and sense objects of the physical world or just of the world. Look at that. Detached from the senses and sense objects of the world. That's basic enlightenment. When you realize yourself outside of your five senses. However, this is only part of what is needed for those who live, for those who are living in modern inner cities and are still faced by spiritual predators. The one who is enlightened is usually the one who is the recipient or achiever of spiritual light or awareness. The enlightened one is the one who receives light and radiates light. That's the enlightened one. The enlightened one radiates that light. You're enlightened. But in reality, uh, 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 but in the reality of the chaotic inner city, now we'll stop here real quick. I just want to point something out. Go back up to uh, paragraph 78 toward the end. It says, however, this is only part of what is needed for those who are living in modern inner cities. See how inner cities is spelled? Modern inner cities and are still faced by spiritual predators. That spelling of inner city is the inner cities. You know, the concrete urban environment by which our physical bodies are living. But notice how the other inner city is spelt down here. I'm reading on now, I'm in paragraph 79. The one who is enlightened is usually the one who is the recipient or achiever of spiritual light or awareness. The enlightened one is the one who receives light and radiates light. But in the reality of the chaotic inner city, now look at this inner city, that's the inner you. That's, that's, that's the inner, and we went over the inner city before. So look. I just want you to look at the spelling on that. The chaotic inner city. Enlightenment or awareness is not enough to combat the perceived devils of others within yourself. Devils are attracted to light and beings of light. When God is with you, and notice the spelling of God, you are a target for devils. Likewise, when, when you assist others, you become a target for devils. Be prepared. And notice what we said devils were, because you've got to carry all of this knowledge into these lessons. This is how the gospel of hip-hop works. It's not just every chapter is on its own. This is a progression of spiritual awareness. So when you look at this, what are the devils? The devil's not some half-man, half-animal caricature, you know, uh, 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 with a tail uh, and a horn. And is usually red or black, brown, you know, something like that. Never white. The devil is never white. Uh, always brown, dark, black, red even, uh, with a tail and a horn. Um, that's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the truth. What is the real devil? The real devils in this world 
are jealousies, greeds, hatreds, envies. These are the things. These are the, de the devils because humanity does not exist with these things. This is added on to humanity. Humanity wants to love. Humanity wants peace. And naturally, humans seek peace, seek love, seek safety, comfort, good times. This is what humans seek. This other thing is not natural to human anger. That's not natural to humanity. Sadness, that's not natural. Fear. Now, you could say they are. These are uh, human emotions. But no, they're disruptions in your normal state of being. You don't walk around angry all day. And if you do, you're not going to survive much longer. Same thing with depression. And y'all know what I'm talking about. You walk around sad all day, you're not going to be here much longer. So these are not normal states of being. Normal states of being is when what is whatever is prolonging your life. That's a normal state of being. Anger doesn't prolong your life. Hate does not prolong your life. Love prolongs your life. Laughter prolongs your life. Peace prolongs your life. War does not prolong your life. <laughs> These things should be simple, but people do not live like this. And that's the point to focusing every Sunday on these types of lessons. So let's continue. Listen to what's being said here. Look at this. And, and, and I pause because notice what devils are. Don't get that, that image of some person in your head. That's colonial. Real devils are thieves. The idea of theft is the devil. Hatred is in. Devils are attracted to light and beings of light. When God is with you, you are a target for devils. Likewise, when you assist others, you become a target for devils. And look at it. And notice the light. You become a target. When you assist in other people, you become a target for jealousy. You become a target for hate because you're helping. <laughs> you're doing something good in life. People hating you. Be prepared. Ignorance seeks to eat awareness. But like a moth that is attracted to a flame, devils are attracted to beings of light only to be incinerated when they finally make contact with such enlightened beings. And that's the truth. This is one of the reasons why many enlightened souls leave the city to find comfort and peace in the mountains, forests, suburbs, and other more secluded and private environments. They care not to sacrifice themselves for the good of those around them, and such is their decision to make, such is their privilege. They have earned their escape. They are indeed free. This is most of the spiritual people in the world, and it's not a lot of us walking around. But those who actually realize themselves outside of their five senses, realize that there is no death, realize that God is true and real, like not that man in the sky, but the intelligence of the universe is aware of you. There's a lot of people that understand that. This, this getting into their psychic abilities can read minds, can can remote, remotely see, uh, um, remotely view other areas that they're not in. You know, people can move objects with their minds just because th nobody can see. You know, it's not a television show, or they're not running around doing this. Uh, doesn't mean that it's not true. You got to think past the TV or the internet. For when one is enlightened, it is difficult to live around those who are not. In fact, not only is it depressing and spiritually depleting to constantly witness other human beings helplessly uh, uh, being helplessly devoured by devils, but even when you have become unplugged and unattached, wandering devils through people and circumstances will not cease attacking you. But some spirit beings are indeed sent into the world to do battle and free people from their own demons. Some spirit beings are prepared to sacrifice themselves for the sake of the world's maturity. In the hip hop culture, these spirit beings are called teachers. At times we deny ourselves the comforts of the mountains and lakes. I don't even wanna read this part right here because this is what I'm suffering right now. At times we deny ourselves the comforts of the mountains and lakes 
to enter the inner city, and look at the spelling of it, for the purpose of freeing people from their own demons. Look at the double talk that's in there. That inner city represents the, the urban environment, but when it's spelled capital I, capital C, you know we're referring to the overstanding, the inner city, and which means we're talking about you. We're talking about the inner you, your inner consciousness affecting the youth, um, uh, your, your inner city. Consciousness, city, C-I-T-Y, consciousness in the you, or consciousness in the you. Your city. And, 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 and look at that. We, we purposefully deny ourselves the comforts of mountains and lakes to do something inside of us that when we get to the inner city, we're not affected. When we get to real inner cities, we're not affected because the inner city is not affected. And we talked about this in the seventh overstanding, how your day is not based on what's going on outside. Your day is based on what's going on inside. You interpret what your day is going to be. So, some spirit beings are indeed sent into the world to do battle and free people from their own demons. Some spirit beings are prepared to sacrifice themselves for the sake of the world's maturity. In the hip-hop culture, and look at the spelling of hip-hop culture, these spirit beings are called teachers. At times, we deny ourselves the comforts of the mountains and the lakes to enter the inner city for the purpose of freeing people from their own demons, and we are divinely equipped for such a task. Devils run from us. Demons hide from us. Our very presence makes the carnally minded uncomfortable, the criminally minded repent, and the spiritually minded rejoice. For while others enjoy their enlightenment far from the chaos of the inner city, and look at the spelling of that, they're enjoying enlightenment far from doing that inner work. And they're enjoying their enlightenment far from urban environments. For while others enjoy their enlightenment far from the chaos of the inner city, teachers enjoy endarkenment right in the center of the inner city as well as outside. Chaos does not baffle us. Here now is the highlight. You're going to highlight 83 and 80, um, I'm sorry, 85 and 86. We're highlighting 85 and 86. Here we go. For the teacher, the state of endarkenment also helps in one's spiritual survival while working in the inner city. Endarkenment is not the state of, is not a, Endarkenment is not a state of ignorance, and it does not imply a lack of spiritual life. On the contrary, endarkenment is the ability to move in the world without the aid of intellectual awareness or a plan, a sign, etc. Get that. Get that. Endarkenment, this is 86, endarkenment is the ability to see in the dark chaos, to see in darkness, intellectual darkness. The intellect don't know what's going on, but you can still see. And document is the ability to see in the dark chaos without the aid of rational, logical thought. It is a level of spiritual awareness where the teacher appears to operate harmoniously and effortlessly in chaos. It is a stage in one's spiritual development when intellectual awareness, meaning a plan, a script, a book, a map, etc., is no longer needed for one to move victoriously in the physical world. One is aware of one's God and sees the world beyond time and separation. Everything is now and all is God. Everything is now and all is God. Say it again. Say it to yourself. Everything is now and all is God. Say it now. Everything now and all is God. Every day is the same day. 
For when we are spiritually young, we are in need of light, order, awareness. That's what light gives us, order, awareness. We can see. We know what's getting ready to happen. Yeah, all of that. For when we are spiritually young, we are in need of light, order, awareness. The one God, notice the spelling, provides light, order, awareness, so that we may develop and see our way. But if the one God, provides light, order, awareness, or decrees that there should be light, order, awareness, then where is this God? Here's what we're going to do, a lot of, 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 uh, of highlighting, and not here. The one, we're going to underline something here. The one, the one God does not exist in the light, order, awareness, that is provided. God's light is for us. God exists as light, not in light. This is the underline right here. God exists as light, not in light. This is 88. Underline that. God exists as light, not in light. And remember that this is also a beginner's look at it. This whole book is a beginner's look. This is all beginner. But to see things this way is going to lead you to a deeper understanding. God exists as light, not in light. The one God is light, and we are sparks of that light. However, the world cannot see its own light or God as the ultimate unified light energy. The world can't see it. To the world, the one God exists in the dark. For it, God is exists in those highly chaotic and dangerously forbidden, hidden, secret places that incite fear in the hearts of those who forever seek comfort in the temporary security of predictable events. Those who need those predictable events, they fear this level of it. Chaos, insecurity, you don't know what's about to happen, but you actually do because you realize that all of this is about God. And your intention is leading you through the chaos exactly to where you need to be. You're not afraid of chaos. You're not afraid of disorder. You're not afraid of disorganization. You don't invite it, but you ain't afraid of it. And when it comes, you, you back up and you say, aha, divine timing. Aha, divine space. I can see what's going on here. Here's how you get to that, to that overstanding. Notice how is being written, notice this, God exists in those highly chaotic and dangerously forbidden. Can you look at what's forbidden? Don't go there, it's the devil. Oh no, I don't want to see the devil. They just took your culture. Can you go where it is forbidden to see God? The hidden, secret places. Can you discover the hidden? Go to those secret places? that incite fear. These are the places that incite fear in those that seek comfort in, the, in, in security and predictable events. Yes, we want security. And yes, we want to know what the hell is going on. But your whole life cannot be lived like that. Always knowing what's going on. You can't get nothing new. 90, paragraph 90. The practice of endarkenment begins with the understanding that it is the the constant search for worldly, worldly intellectual security. And, and by the way, I'm sorry, uh, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95. In fact, from 90 to the end of um, track three, we're highlighting. So from 90 to 95, all of this is highlighted. This is the crux of this lesson right here. This is the life that I'm living right now. Humbly, I say this, and cautiously, I say this, because everybody can't live this life. But it's wonderful if you can get here. This is what I'm. This is this is what I'm saying. The practice of endarkenment begins with the understanding that it is the constant search for worldly intellectual security, which is usually the idea of never doing without, always having an abundance of whatever is needed. Always knowing ahead what is going on that keeps us from being totally developed as spiritually mature beings. You, you think that having all of your needs met means that you're spiritually mature. No, having your needs met is one part of it. 
The other part of it is, can you survive when your needs are not met? When the, when the rent's due and you don't have the money. When the car note's due and you don't have the money. When you're being threatened by people who you owe to. Or you're getting ready to do a, you're ready to enter a situation you never did before, never know nothing, nothing, and you're nervous about it. A first time situation. This is this is what this is what keeps us from becoming spiritually mature, always having to know what's about to happen. For as long as we depend upon our intellectual pre-planning abilities exclusively, we shall never develop the ability to see and act spontaneously in the dark with God, where most times there is no foreseeable plan. At this state of awareness, things are effortlessly and spontaneously created as needed. Underline that last um, uh, sentence. The whole paragraph's being highlighted, 90 all the way to 95, but underline this. At this state of awareness, things are effortlessly and spontaneously created as needed. Here, the teacher understands that abundance and wealth are great resources to have. But having the ability of true faith is worth even more. Imagine, faith is worth more than a million dollars. Because you could get that million and may never get it again. Or you may get that million and have to keep working to get your, to maintain your money. Or you could live a life where when you need that million, and seriously need it, when you need it, it appears. Jump off. A situation jumps off. You get the million, and you only need it for this. And when and, and when you spend it on what you need it for, it's gone, and you're back to $20. Can you live like that? Can you be at the Motel 6 one night because they're robbing people at, at, at the Hilton, and then the next day be at the W because the Motel 6 is going to burn down? Can you walk like this? Not know, just being guided by the holy GPS. Guidance, protection, strength. You're just guided. At this state of awareness, things are effortlessly and spontaneously created as needed. This is now. This is spontaneous. God is now. Here, the teacher understands that abundance and great wealth are great resources to have, but having the ability of true faith is worth even more. It is here that the attuned hip-hop realizes what faith actually is here faith is about having what you need exactly when you need it i would underline that too go ahead and underline that here faith is about having what you need exactly when you need it quite different from asking god in fear for an abundance of this or that the attuned and boundless teacher gets exactly what he needs exactly when it is needed. In the one God, the teacher truly trusts, and I do, straight up. This is the life right here. Miraculously, and the word is miraculously, and with little effort, the teacher receives the perfect weapon just before the fight. The teacher receives the exact amount of cash just before the bill. The teacher receives the perfect vehicle just before the trip. The perfect clothing just before the engagement. And I would underline this next line right here. This is the practice of endarkenment. It is about trusting and perceiving in your God, even when your intellect is baffled and cannot see a solution. It is about seeing and walking in intellectual darkness as spiritual light. Underline that whole thing. That explains in darkening. At this level of consciousness, the teacher does not move around the world. It is the world that moves around the teacher. Through, through discipline and righteous living, the teacher expects the intelligence of life itself to be in harmony with the fulfillment of her purpose. Everything happens perfectly in its right place and perfectly in its right time, always right on time. 
highlight from 90 to 95 and underline all of the underlines that we just went through. Uh, the 91, the last sentence of 91, the first sentence of 93, um, the, the uh, last uh, two sentences of uh, 94, and, uh, and, and that's it. Um, and of course, this will conclude, uh, right, this, this, this will conclude our reading uh, this week. Um, this was track three. And, and, and really take a listen to what we're talking about here. We're basically explaining in darkening, basically explaining what in darkening is in track three. Those that teach the gospel, you should make a note of this. In darkening is explained in track three. And what is in document? It's explained right here. It's about trusting and perceiving in your God force, in your divinity, even when your intellect is baffled, cannot be illusion. It's seen walking in intellectual darkness as spiritual light. It's not about dissing your intellect or discarding your intellectual ability. It's not about that. It's about having something else, another place to go. And this other place to go is actually an intellectual technique, really. But it requires feeling. It requires intent. It requires expectancy. It requires what are your principles? What are your, val your values? What are you focused upon? This is what you're going to expect. When you expect that, well, now I'm, I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I, I live according to the principle, so I expect the miracle. And it's not even a miracle. If, if, if you bake the cake and put it in the oven, you expect the cake to get to rise and, and come out and you eat it. it. Your spirituality should be the same way. You know, if you do a job, if you work a job, you expect to get paid uh, for your work, for, for your service. Well, if you live a righteous life, a consciously righteous life, you in peace, love, unity, and joy. Psh, there it is. You ain't trying to hurt people. You ain't hating nobody. In fact, you loving and helping people. You're not a thief. You're actually a charitable person, giving. You're grateful for what you do have. You're not envious and jealous of what other people got. You're grateful for what you got. You know, you, everybody doubts, but you're not doubting to the point where you're stagnated. These are the spiritual principles. These are spirit. And if you live like this, you expect God. You expect your ancestors. You expect life itself through circumstances and situations to protect you, to guide you give you strength so that's what the, that's what in document is is, is 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 really all about this constant search for intellectual security uh, having a plan having a, 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 a map a book uh, uh, being able to foresee something and know what's going on having an appointment and all of that the, these things are good they have their place we're talking about an expanded awareness where you can exist without an appointment you can exist without a plan. Spontaneously, you take advantage of the moment right there. This is this is what endarkment is really all about. And most people look only for enlightenment and missing out on this other awareness. Thank you again this week. I am KRS One. Got a new album coming out. It's called I M A M C R U One Two. Did you get that? Every letter is the name. So it's a capital I space, capital M space, A, M, C, you know, space, space between all. But it, it's not, you know, spelt out letter wise. It looks like Imam Crew 12 as it's spelled out. But it's I M A M C R a U, the numbers one and a two. I M A M C R U one two. Get the word out. Uh, the album comes out uh, February 22nd, uh, 2022. At least that's what we're shooting for. Uh, February 2nd, 20... Um, I'm sorry, February uh, 22nd, 2022. Uh, looking to drop that. You're going to see new videos uh, jumping off. Big up to Sun One. Uh, he produces his... He's rising on this album as well. He did one or two tracks on the, on the last album or so other... other projects, but this time, Sun One came forward, produced 90% of the album, uh, the beats are banging, um, he appears on the album as well, shout out to him. G. Simone, 
obviously always the, set, the executive producer of the album, also appears on the album, and she just finished up her work. Uh, she has an EDM following. I mean, G. Simone has an eclectic bunch of music. She has her R&B uh, uh, situation going on. She has a hip-hop situation as, as, as well, song-wise, I'm saying. Has hip-hop songs in that way, or hip-hop sounding songs in, 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 in that way, cultural songs in that way. Then she got this um, R&B thing going. You got to hear this song called Hallelujah. We play that. Another song called Please. These are these are these are well written songs. Then you got the, the the piece that I'm talking about, which is the EDM part. Will I Am jumped in on one of the songs, a song called Celebrate Our Lives. When I was in Coachella, we tested it at Coachella. It ripped the place down. Uh, and I'm not just saying this. We have data. We have empirical data. Uh, what happened when we threw this song on? It was crazy. Uh, so the remix of it is Will I Am. And Simone performing together. Uh, Simone hits the chorus as well. Will I Am does two verses. Uh, she's going to drop that video first and follow up with the original uh, uh, later on as well. So this is the music getting ready to come out. You got G. Simone uh, with the song Celebrate Our Lives. Celebrate Our Lives. It's the remix. Uh, actually, the remix version looks like it's coming out first uh, with G. Simone and Will I Am. That's going to be blazing on the EDM level. It's, it's crazy. Um, then you have KRS-One, obviously, uh, dropping February uh, 22nd, 2022. The album is called I-M-A-M-C-R-U-1-2, and it's an MC album. You notice I'm theming my album's last album was called Between the Protest, or should I say Between the Protest, BDP, uh, Between the Protest. And you saw what it was about. And the reason I named the album Between the Protest uh, was because although it came out during the protest and the uprisings that were going on in the United States, it came out during that time and was addressing those issues. I named the album Between the Protest because I knew we would be at this stage right now, where now people are back to business, back to this, the regular nonsense and ignorance, and we're forgetting about George Floyd. We're forgetting about, you know, that there's now new people now getting killed for no reasons and no-knock warrants and uh, people, cops now coming into your home now. You know, this is what this is now. So we're now forgetting that the 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 George Floyd Justice and Policing Act was never passed. We're forgetting now that, you know, justice is really not being met here. So that album was called Between the Protest. So we know we're going to rise up and so on. Then there's going to be a valley part where everybody's just going to go back to business as usual. Now you should be playing Between the Protest because we're between protests. We know, and, and, and really I can't even say that, the time for between the protests is gone because after the latest killings, it just went down. People are back out in the street again. So we're back to the protests again in America coming into the summer. It looked like we're going to be back in the streets again. Uh, and so between the protests really probably is either for right now, right now, or it, it had its moment about a month ago. It, 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 the time to listen to it was when it came out all the way up to about a month ago because people are back in the streets now. We had our valley moment. But you can check out Between the Protests right now that we don't forget the vibrancy, the anger, the, the, the righteous anger, I should say, uh, the passion is what I should say, for justice, for justice. We should not forget that. We should not forget that. But now, here we are. On an MC mode, hip hop is moving toward its skill base. People are bringing back boom bap beats. People are spitting raw. I'm hearing it all over. And I'm glad to be part of that as well, to be part of the beginning, not the beginning, but to be part of it. You know, just to be part of it. Um, of MCs spitting poetry, metaphors, wordplay, sentence structure, rhythm. What images am I making in your mind? What's the movie? What script am I writing? Those that are interested in that style of rap music, that's what I'm bringing forward. It's an MC's album. It's a live album. It's, a, it's an album where, you know, you spit these rhymes live, but as an album that you listen to, you know, in headphones or in your car, in the home, or, or whatever, it's an MC's album. 
This is not a protest album. This is an MC's album. I'm sending a message to all the MC's that keep your skills tight. Whatever you do, keep your skills tight. And this is what um, MCing looks like at 50 years old. This is what MCing looks like in, in mid-50s too, by the way. This is what it looks like. Have some hope for your future. KRS-One is leading the way. I'm still spitting right now raw. And I say that humbly, but I also say it with confidence to give you the confidence. Give you the confidence. This is what it looks like, y'all. We're going to keep spitting. We ain't giving this up. This is our culture we're talking about. And this is one of the arts of the culture. It's called MCing. So I am a M C R U one two. That's what we're dealing with. Uh, February twenty second, twenty twenty two. Every Sunday we get together like this, twelve o'clock, uh, and uh, twelve o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, so on, and uh, other times around the world. But I thank you for your participation, lending your mind to this. Uh, as G. Simone pointed out at the beginning, the Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation society, a uh, hip hop preservation ministry archive, school, and society. This is what we do. And we're not just preserving hip hop's material, uh, uh, um, its material existence. Uh, we're preserving hip hoppers. We believe that hip hop is hip hoppers. So if you're preserving hip hop, let's preserve hip hoppers. And the way to preserve hip hop, uh, preserve hip hoppers, is with this kind of knowledge. Don't trip yourselves up thinking that hate is good. Don't trip yourself up thinking that worry and doubt and fear is how you're supposed to be. Don't trip yourself up with false ideas about what God is, what spirit is, what good is, what bad is, what light is, and what dark is. Don't trip yourself up with that. This is a new version of spirituality. It's actually called philosophy. <laughs> the pursuit and love of wisdom. That's what this actually is. So I'm out, y'all. This is KRS-One. I appreciate you guys. G. Simone, take us out um, here as well. Sun One uh, is going to take us out as, 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 as usual. So that's it for me. Peace and love. See you next week. Peace and much love to everybody again. Uh, thank you for joining us this week. Um, it was another enlightening, uh, wonderful reading by our teacher, KRS-One. Um, I had to change locations, hopefully. Uh, we had a storm earlier and the clouds are up. And so it was making everything a little choppy in the beginning. So hopefully uh, you'll be able to hear me a lot better right now or see me a lot better without the choppiness and all the above, but you might hear my dog, you might hear my daughter, my wife, uh, cause I've invaded uh, the living room. <laughs> but so, well, first I'll comment on the um, I am a MC, are you one too? Uh, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I got to listen to the, the whole rundown um shout out to uh pascal pascal got a uh the craziest is on there and he got another joint uh which is dope um also uh k prime came with a with a banger uh in the clutch and of course emladi uh Mwadai, uh from poland uh he got a crazy joint um, I believe the one with uh, Simone on it, uh, Minister G. Simone. So that's, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very nice uh, hip hop presentation, uh, which I'm sure is, is going to open up a lot of people's eyes and let them know what time it is. Um, because you can't, uh, <laughs> you can try to ignore us. Uh, but the people hold us down, just like on this call. And that's why I, or we want to thank you all very much. Like, you guys are, are, are real, real supporters of what we do. And pretty much without you, uh, or we very likely would still do hip-hop because we are hip-hop. But it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't be the same. Um, 
and we probably just share it amongst each other. <laughs> but so uh, that being said, it is it is very much a privilege and an honor uh, to have lent my assistance to this project in in such a big way and and in working with our teacher. You never know really how it's going to turn out, but it just so happened that spirit was hitting me at the right time uh, when I was making the beats and apparently they was the right beats at the right time. And so such is what y'all going to get in a, in a hot minute. I think we're only uh, nine days away, nine, nine day countdown. Um, we'll be having some uh, programs or, or, or commercials that go out uh, to spread the word of the album, but let people know of what it is. Um, I like to give a shout out to everybody who's uh, so far. Um, we'll all let you know that in the month of March, for those who purchase beats, I got something special coming for y'all um, to show my appreciation uh, for your assistance, uh, really, with my um, my finances, <laughs> and my family, and my bills. Uh, and what that so it's it's a great help um but again I, I'm, I'm trying to give you that quality uh the same things that i'm putting up there's the same things i will offer to the teachers so you should really know uh it's no bs i'm not giving i'm not putting up any throwaway beats or things like that uh this is this is that stuff <laughs> um but so uh, let me let me talk about the lesson real quick, and then again, I, I'll play a video in which uh, everybody can get their questions together um, and ask their questions, and I'll come back and answer the questions after that. Um, also, I'll answer a question from last week that I didn't answer purposely because I wanted to be um, accurate on my answer, but I have the answer now, and so such I will give it at the end of this presentation. But so this, this lesson was very, very much on time, um, especially these uh, last six paragraphs, the, the highlights of it, um, to know what it, what it really is. And, and it was like teacher was, he was saying my, uh, <laughs> in my life uh, through his words, uh, lifting me softly, uh, and whatnot, but no, to, to actually exist and know that everything is going to be okay. Um, no matter, no matter what it is, when, like, like I know, or uh, there's a brother of ours, or, um, at least through my Facebook and, he put up a post or this week, unfortunately, so crazy because this seems to be the first time that I've actually witnessed and experienced this happen. And it really touched my heart um, at the fact that a brother lost uh, his partner in life. And I couldn't imagine um, going through that, having him here one day and then just all of a sudden getting sick. I'm not sure whether it was COVID related. I, I'd, I'd imagine so or something very close, but it's like to have no warning and for that to happen is and has to be an insane hurt um, to think everything's fine one day and then seemingly it not be okay. But the truth is everything is going to be okay. And he now uh, has somebody on the other side that's really going to be with him forever uh, un until he gets there, um, which I've experienced um, firsthand through the loss of my mother that, no, I, I get contacted almost every day um, and, and get reminded that she's near and she's with me and to not worry, uh, to have faith that for one, the things working on that side is a thousand, if not a million times more powerful 
than what's actually happening in this physical plane. Um, so you should know that and, and no matter what it is. Um, I, I read recently, somebody put up a thing. Um, it was a meme uh, going across social media in which it said, there are people who died yesterday who had a whole bunch of plans today. Like they had all this stuff lined up, ready to do the next day, yet they never made it to that next day. Um, so such is a real, real thing um, that essentially we all have to experience. And to know that the truth of it and to have faith that God is in total control and, and knows the right time for these things to happen and that it does ultimately work into the realm of circumstances that God is controlling in order to make all things happen um, at its exact right time. Again, that last word or the last sentence, everything happens perfectly in its right place and perfectly in its right time, always right on time. And though it may not always be what you want it to be, um, ultimately is working for the highest good or for the greatest good uh, for the entire universe. Um, so just know and understand that. Um, trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to uh, touch on. Um, but I can't think of it right now. So we will go to, oh, actually, Right, or, or what teacher was talking about for between the protests. And I will correct to say, I think I did like five joints on between the protests. <laughs> included, well, included with the uh, extended version, another one slipped on. Um, uh, but no, people people are, 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 it's going right back to usual. And I was I was charting, I thought that it wasn't going to happen until April to be honest with you. Um, mind you, people have been dying this whole time. Still mad, um, unlawful uh, murders of, of citizens at the hands of police have been happening the entire time uh, that we've been in between the protests. It's just not making large news stories. And there's something to be looked at to whereas the... Um, there was there was a large insurgence of of uh, women being murdered at the hands of police um, right before this big uh, no knock story that just happened. There was like weeks of women being murdered that didn't get the um, the national attention that it necessarily should have gotten. And so you have to wonder why is that? Um, and, and I have a theory that, no, if, if you really upset the women um, to the point of no return, that it actually is a point of no return and that things will never go back to being the same until things are uh, changed. Um, and that women have the power uh, even if through this lint in my hair is getting me, um, that women have the power to essentially make sure that no, this is or we're, we're not going back to a normal society, uh, everything's got to change, and so know that, um, about yourself, should you be uh, a woman, uh, know your power, uh, that you possess to really cause change uh, within our societies. Um, I got a little shout out to, um, actually before I get to that, let me also say shout out to Minister Zinaru again uh, for handling our um, our calendars, uh, which is dope. I left mine upstairs, um, so I won't be able to show it to you physically, but that's how you can get it right there. Um, and also, uh, I believe we're at a count of, uh, we have 54 sold. All those orders that have been placed this week, uh, Minister Zinaru has assured me that they will be fulfilled. 
um, on Monday. Um, so your calendars will be out in the mail on Monday. Um, I would also say that if you can, if you've gotten a calendar, uh, because it seems like maybe we've hit our um, our core audience of, of who we've sold it to, if you can get another one, please get another one. Uh, we really only have a goal of selling about 150 of them. Um, if we sell 150 of them, that should be able to cover our shipping costs and also the coverage of the amount of calendars that we got. And I would also say for those who buy more than one, uh, we'll figure out something to get you extra special as well. Um, before, uh, I want to say before Hip Hop Appreciation Week. So if you guys can help us essentially get to that goal, uh, there will be some type of reward uh, for doing so. But also, uh, don't think if you can't, then you can't. But those who have gotten it, you are very, very much appreciated. Um, and lets us know that we can do something like this annually and make sure that uh, we have a temple of hip hop calendar uh, forever. And as it grows and gets bigger and, and nicer even, um, we'll have different configurations of calendars and this, hat and the third. Um, so again, shout out to you. Um, I also want to give a shout out to God One, Professor Sanchez, Steel Mountain, Jay Bess, uh, Professor A.D., Rai Haru One, Benny. Um, these are all people who work with us uh, behind the scenes or, or who have helped uh, when we actually land in certain towns, assisted us in making sure that we're able to get around and, and take care of the business that we have um, to do when we land in their respective cities or and or just um, within our uh, organization, no part of the Temple of Hip Hop, which helps bring you things such as the Temple Calendar. Um, you should also know uh, behind the scenes that a um, a Latin version of the gospel of hip hop is being put together um, and also a French version is being put together as well. Uh, we'd hope to have as many languages as possible, the gospel of hip hop so that um, it could spread more, but we also are aware that English seems to be um, a normal second language for a lot of uh, other countries. Um, so that's dope. Um, okay, and with that, we're going we're gonna to check out the beginning. I'll check out some of these questions, and I'll get right back to you. Yo, check your mic. Let's test these levels. Check, 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 check. Okay, word. We got the sound. Let me know when the break's coming in. Nah, there's no break. I'm just gonna go straight through. I kick that shit. Heaven sent, I can prove this Any crowd, turn me up loud KR will move this Long before Easy e this MC He was ruthless Kicking rhymes, spitting rhymes, written rhymes Freestyle, I do this Who's this? You don't know me, homie I'm the one and only I turn your tool into a toll Tell you you owe me You ain't gotta go to the past to know me, homie I'm KRS-One My power is now At the Tolly These rappers are bony and lonely I catch them coming out of Shoney's I don't Oscar or admire They baloney No phony I spit for the time from the mind So when I spit off the head, of course I'm ahead of my time Yes, I'm better with rhyme, and it's evident I'm The lyrically benevolent kind, this you never gonna find I'm spitting plenty medleys, this is work, not a job Rappers are crying like the boss in reverse, they saw that's when they get robbed and disappointed They not anointed, get them set up like an appointment I spit the same heat you like to joint with Fire, spit the truth, no liar Heaven said, this is higher The mic cooks, I write books The heavyweight champion The song becomes a knockout with the right hook I'm raw, meaning not cooked These fake rappers, heads are down Cause in the face of KRS, they do not look 40 cal style, rap up palm like big drums When I heat up the club to 420, it's done Light up the cheeks with the chunk 
tongue I teach when I come Knowledge reigning supreme What these rappers speaking is dumb It's a treat when I come I'm not what you used to I'm the return of Khufu All over these tracks like Choo Choo I'm the guru So when my teaching premieres It's gangstar Hitting you and your man In the same car These whack rappers Fuck who they are KRS is like a hooligan Hitting them all with the same bars Hooligans Hitting them with the same bars Your whack style just ain't ours Venus to Mars I'm teaching with bars Spitting these bars But young is under 21 Can't even get into these bars So I don't blame them If they not seeing these bars Cause when I hit them with my universe All they see in the stars Speaking of bars When I spit one You can see it's all about Impact over an income The big one Multi-directional and exceptional Ten of my first 20 albums Are all collectibles You feel the heat When I'm next to you Truly legendary Underground Undetectable And revolutionary Most of what's going on today You know we knew already I tried to teach our people About poverty It took too many It shook too many We can see what a curse is So I re-emerge To show these youngins Who the first is The minister Frying rap Chicken like churches And the worst is seeing your temperature taken by nurses IV bags, your family picking out hearses It's like you at the Barclay Center You won't survive these verses Sprite means spirit, so I obey what my thirst is The whole planet, so-called Earth, is what my turf is Can Hold, up, hold up, yo, I got this Yo, this is about to be fire Levels is on point You sound good out here Let's get this project started Hey, word, and there it is. Um, okay, so uh, last week's question, I was asked about the difference between um, capital G, lowercase o, lowercase d, and capital G, capital O, and capital D. What is the difference, and where can you find it within the gospel of hip-hop? Now, I'll say first off, um, the short answer is, that capital G, lowercase o, lowercase d is the, is you, <laughs> in a sense, of uh, your higher self and pretty much you uh, is who that is. But capital G, capital O, capital D is the sovereign of the universe, the, the great divine, um, great one deity uh, that exists, that controls everything. Um, but seeing as you are a projection of that, and essentially even you could say a thought or the creation of that, then you too share in that inheritance, which makes you capital G, lowercase o, lowercase d. But within the gospel of hip hop, you can find explanations as to um, the capital G, capital O, capital D throughout the entire gospel. I would say you start with the love. Uh, it goes really heavy into explaining um, what God is uh, to the temple of hip hop. You also have um, in the uh, overstanding of the teacher, uh, I found on starting on page 487, um, starting at paragraph 109, the teacher lives in God, and then it has a dash the living, universal, eternal, creative spirit of immortality. That's capital G, capital O, capital D. But if you follow along, um, and go. Uh, throughout, I would say probably up to one fourteen. Um, that'll it, it'll give you a little back and forth, so then you can see where it talks about uh, capital G, lowercase O, lowercase D. Um, but oh no, I just lost it. Say it ain't so. Oh, that was whack. That was real whack. Because uh, it had a... Uh, <laughs> the, the best one. Um, oh, that is so whack. Okay, I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep uh, searching through that. 
uh, to find where I was. That is so wet because it really uh, started going in. Um, okay, no, no, here it is. Um, if you read um, Our God, the great event, um, that really goes deep into capital G, capital O, capital D. Um, teacher gives a uh, explanation as far as, or, or this is where it really breaks down both capital G, capital O, capital D, capital G, lowercase o, lowercase d. Um, and I, I, I could read at least just this one uh, paragraph uh, just so that you could get an idea, which is on page uh, 607, but I really advise that you read the entire thing. Um, it says, for we have learned that right along with looking for God, capital G, capital O, capital D, within ourselves, we must also look for capital G, capital O, capital D, without ourselves, meaning that we must also look at the guidance of our lives outside of ourselves and even without ourselves. When you can see without yourself, you see capital G, capital O, capital D. When you can act without yourself, you become capital G, lowercase o, lowercase d. But again, or, or this that's that becomes a, a whole lesson um, of which, but you can teach it, give several explanations throughout the entire uh, gospel as far as what it uh, really is. Um, I saw earlier a question about memorizing the highlights. Uh, yes, to the best of your ability, um, it is advised to memorize as much as you can of those um, highlights. Or at least, I would say, because everybody's memorization isn't necessarily the best, um, you should be able to know how to operate this gospel. <laughs> So that if, if a specific question is asked, that you could go to it quickly um, and be able to give an answer. Um, and so, but but you would have to have a knowledge of the highlights because again, the highlights are are mainly or, or mostly explanations um, for incurring questions that you would get from a person just joining the temple of hip hop or who just gets a gospel of hip hop or wants to know, or wants to really just pick your brain about the gospel of hip hop and trying to figure out how uh, you claim and figure that this is something actually spiritual. Um, so it is best that you can memorize, that if you memorize as much as possible, um, that would be best. Um, okay, let me go back down a little bit. Going through, going through. Okay, well, we have a an opportunity to purchase all these lessons to always have in case YouTube becomes a thing of the past. Yes, you will, pal. Um, you will have that opportunity, and we're actually going to put these together um, in a much more a uh, professional way <laughs> of which we'll go back, take the lessons, uh, make sure uh, or get the best versions of it uh, for parts when it is choppy um, and we can correct those or, or come in and make sure that it, it is very clear what is being said. Um, we'll also have audio versions of this as well um, once we get past the actual reading, which we're coming up very close um, to the middle of the gospel. Um, actually, after this overstanding, um, I want to say, I think it goes into the um, freestyles. Or wait, hold on. No, I may be jumping the gun. Oh, no, no, it is. Right, we go into the freestyles right after this. And so the freestyles does take up a decent part of the gospel of hip hop. But within that would be. Um, around the half mark, around uh, 416. Uh, the gospel is 
832 pages, I believe. Am I right? Yes, I am. Um, so 416 falls within that place that we go a little bit above that. So we've actually made it to the halfway uh, point almost after the next reading. So everybody should feel very accomplished um, that you've gone through over 400 pages um, of the gospel of hip hop with us. Some people haven't read 400 pages in their life. And I understand before I got this book, um, I never read a consistent uh, 400 pages. And I say that even with saying I read the Bible, read the Quran, but it's not um, the layouts of those. It's not the same, or you guys know it. You have the gospel of hip hop, preach to the choir. Um, so that's that. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. My beat site, you can actually just go to beatstars.com and type in sun1, S U N O N E, in order to access the beat site. Um, okay, I think, well, I thought I saw one more. And I'm not seeing it. Uh, peace and much love. Where can I donate to the Temple of Hip Hop? Uh, you're looking at it. It's actually going across the screen right now below me. So there it is. Okay, here it is. Uh, can you please elaborate on developing discipline through spiritual principles? I'm, I'm having a hard time kind of feeling how you want it to be elaborated um, because spiritual principles bring discipline in your life as, as long as you're sticking to those spiritual principles. Um, I don't know if you have another way of rewording that question, but unfortunately that's all my brain is seeing right now is that the more that you practice your spiritual principle principles the more disciplined you'll be there there will be certain things that you can't that you won't do um it's just like and it, it's funny because what falls under spiritual principles can actually be several things like and that that sound like thing um but they're actual spiritual principles like not lying is a spiritual principle um uh, respecting some other people is a spiritual principle. <laughs> it seems like that's regular stuff. It's like, no, it's, it's actually not. Or, or I'm sure everybody can see throughout their lives people being disrespected and, and just doing wild stuff all the time. Y'all see the videos uh, that end up going viral or people are just crazy. Um, keep your hands to yourself is a spiritual principle. <laughs> which has been broken. I'm sure you guys have seen certain hip hop is uh, going through it um, of what it is. Uh, we, we will have, uh, we'll figure out the way of which uh, we give out our certifications at the end of the reading of the gospel of hip hop. There's, there's really no, worry or, or reason to worry about that right now um i would just say concentrate on your study um and pretty much just try to make sure that you retain and, and learn as much as you can um such as to say when it goes down when certain things are said if if, if they sound brand new to you that's that's going to kind of be obvious um, that or, or there may just be a um, some type of lack of attention um, that you just may need to work a little bit harder. Um, and so also know that the first certification, should you not achieve it at that time, that's not a time to give up. Uh, if you if you've put time into studying and learning the gospel of hip hop and it is within your heart and it's a passion of yours to teach the gospel of hip hop, uh, you don't give up. Uh, living hip hop is a, is a lifestyle. It's a, it's a life. It's for a lifetime. 
So you, you don't stop. Even if this doesn't exist, you still continue to live and teach hip hop. Um, it's, it's more of who you are on the inside, which will manifest on the outside to a point where like you can't help it in a sense. Um, so that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Um, pray for those that we have lost, pray for those who are still living, um, that let's, let's get a manifestation of, of good fortune, uh, for everybody, especially those within our circumference of those, uh, studying the gospel of hip hop, but for also for those that you don't know, um, let's, let's pray for people to have changes of hearts, uh, for those who don't necessarily, um, reflect the better things in life. They don't reflect peace. They don't reflect, reflect, uh, love, joy, happiness, um, let's hope that something gets within them and they want to make a change in their life to be a better person. Uh, it would be best for all of us, obviously, um, and best for our children. So peace and much love to you all. I am Minister Sun One, and this is the Temple of Hip Hop. Peace.